Hello and welcome back. I'm Shelf Unit and this is my continuing Let's Play of Shadowrun Hong Kong Extended Edition. We upgraded our equipment last time and finished our run, collected payment, etc, etc. And now we're going to head out and quickly do another run, hopefully. We picked up another mission last time as well. Um, let's kidnap Rooster Low. We'll have the Decker, we'll have the Security Specialist, and I'll have my Shaman. What outfit has he got? Yeah, he's got a big armor. Okay, let's cancel. We've got everybody. Let's confirm and go. See how this one rolls. Tangle of marine decorum, restless lights, and ambrosial scents mingle atop a floating key to accent the Shangri-La. Aberdeen Harbour's premier dining location, with competitive views of the surrounding bay. The restaurant attracts a steady crowd of tourists and woozing personnel. Primary money man for the 289s, Chung Sing Rooster Lo, is enjoying a rare meal outside of Triad Hill territory. Intel says he is set up, one, up, set up in one of the restaurant's private dining rooms, but he's not alone. Rooster keeps a personal bodyguard, a notorious orc called the Talon, in addition to his regular security detail. He sent photos of the Talon's handiwork, body so battered it's hard to tell where one bruise ends and the next begins. Your mission. Locate Rooster, extract him from the Shangri-La and deliver him to your client alive. Simple, fast, low profile. Of course, even the simplest of runs can go sideways. Dot, dot, dot. Equipment. We've got nothing new. What's this? It's burning there. It's Gobert can come in and bring that. And we're ready to go. Okay. Let's talk to the security guard. Stepping into the interior hallway of the Shangri-La. You're confronted by a massive wall of trouble. The restaurant's front door security. He speaks with surprising elocution. Welcome to the Shangri-La. We strive to provide our patrons with an exquisite dining experience. If you have any questions or require special accommodations, don't hesitate to speak with our staff. Looks like I've got my pick of tables. Oh, I'm sorry, but this is not a see yourself establishment. If you'd like to choose where you sit, I suggest you make a reservation for one of the private rooms upstairs. He looks you up and down, France. But please keep in mind that any disturbances will be promptly de-escalated by our security. We reserve the right to bar unruly patrons. Thank you and enjoy your meal. What security? I don't see any guards around. With a puff of his chest and shake of his shoulders, the troll assumes a more aggressive posture. His face remains a mask of neutrality, despite the obvious irritation in his voice. Woozing prides itself on having world-class security personnel. We do well remember the best kind of security is often hidden from sight. Under her breath. Pretty hard not to see that guy. Okay, let's roll. Crap, was truly amazing. I just wish I didn't have to wait now to get it. A waitress swamped with orders is caught unawares by your approach. Oh, welcome to the Shangri-La, ma'am. The hostess will seat you as soon as she gets back. You're welcome to wait in the lounge. Let's let her take a second. A loud exhalation escapes through her nose and her eyes dart towards the kitchen. She musters an empty smile and nods in a false hospitality. Absolutely, ma'am. What is it you need? I'm looking for someone, Mr. Lowe. He has a reservation here tonight. Sorry, not familiar with that name. Charisma 3. I'll bet a hard-working waitress like yourself is good with faces. You'd certainly remember this man. Travels with a big orc who's got a nasty scar on his cheek. She fiddles with her scratch pad and eyes. The plen dear, plenteous orders scrawled across its top page. After a moment of consideration, she speaks. I might know the orc if he's who I'm thinking of. He only comes around a couple of times a year. I never served him, but I heard he gets real pushy with the other waiters. Pushy, huh? What's that? He's allergic to shellfish, I think. He gets so many orders, sometimes mistakes are made. 
and the fear flashes across her face. I didn't just say that. I can assure you her service is second and none. She nervously peeks over her shoulder. Come on now, you must have heard where the Orchid Missile are reading, since you have to make sure allergy related orders get to the right place. Ma'am, this is the Shangri La. We have over two dozen private dining rooms in addition to our main dining floor. As I've already said, I serve out here. Your friend could be in any one of the other rooms. Now, excuse me, please, I need to place these orders. Enjoy your meal. And with that, she wheels around and marches towards the kitchen. So, let's march. I can't believe they're late again. Charity customers always killing my tips. Let's go poison. The heady aroma of spices and sweat bombard your senses as the cooks move through the kitchen, scents churn in their wake. Some sharp, some sweet, some altogether unfamiliar, but all delicious. The chef barks and orders his assistant searing fish and then whirls around muttering fervently to himself. He stops short once he notices you standing in his kitchen. I told him I needed an extra server, not a hobo. Shoot! He gestures towards the door and returns to the tasting an array of sauces. Oops, that's... Okay, that's the chef. An open program tracking food orders in their respective tables flickers steadily on the computer screen. Thank you, sir, from Ren Raku. Shangri-La restaurant. And a new order. The menu pops up with options to view or place for orders. Following the menu is a dining room chart that's been breaking down into server zones. A large comp button on the upper right-hand corner is low has a lock icon over it. Seems people are being too liberal with the free drinks. Unfortunately, it looks like you need a service code to place an order. Servers notes. Inside this file is a series of notes on guests and the restaurant's operations. You scroll through today's notes. Several servers have written about their concerns regarding tonight's lack of security, and a couple are frustrated with the curious guests wandering up to the second floor's private dining rooms. The rest is useless information. Check orders. A list containing dozens of orders pops up, only a handful in the upper floor's private dining rooms. One note on the second floor, order stands out. Private room 2, party of 5, standard seafood buffet 1, wine sampler 3, crab room to go 6, Shangri-La prawns, surf and turf 1, note no prawns avoid cross-contamination with shellfish, diner is allergic. Managers notice. Nothing but your typical wage slave directives in here. There are a few mentions of curtailing re 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 recreational activities in storage rooms and on outer decks. One can only infer the meaning of said activities. Further down, a note of red expressly warns that the special guest on floor two should be served by approved waitstaff only, and if the guest's order is botched again, there will be significant and widespread consequences for all servers involved. Okay, let's exit. Let's head up here. Let's talk to whoever Henry is. A well-dressed man sits alone at the bar, elbows propped up the top of the counter. His face is hard, eyes blank. He swirls the contents of his half-empty glass as if in a stupor. Between the swollen eyes and whiskey double, it isn't hard to guess his mood. As you approach, he rubs his temples and graces you with a lazy sideways glance. Mumbles under his breath, Yeah, I'm not like I can dig myself any deeper. Rough day. Oh, he looks at you again through dull bloodshot eyes, but his gaze drifts elsewhere before returning to his drink. Lost two contracts, Mr. Third, late for a meeting and publicly shamed by my co-worker. All during the night of five. New record as far as I can tell. Takes a long pull from his glass and exhales. I've got at least got that going for me. I lose your contacts. Contracts. Wish I knew. One of them was almost a done deal. But for some reason the client suddenly changed their tune and the contract slipped away before I could officially close it. The other two contracts were for ongoing clients. People I'd worked with for years, but somehow I forgot about their annual renewal date. A more diligent co-worker picked them up. I got no credit for the long-term partnership with those clients. If anything, I look now worse for losing them, even though I brought them into losing in the first place. He leans back and lets out a weary groan. His breath reeks of alcohol. Sounds like too many coincidences to me. You think someone's working against you? you kidding me? Everyone is, is, everyone's at each other's throat in this business. He downs the rest of his drink, signals to the bartender. In a single movement, the bartender leans over and refills the glass. Fair, but somebody would have benefited most from what's happened to you. He considers this. The newcomer, David. Henry nods his head towards a group at the end of the bar, an elf at the centre. Him. He came out of nowhere and has become a rock star within the upper management. He'd been making connections and deals like a woozing veteran like me. That's odd. You're telling me you want to know what I think? He leans towards your glassy eyes, looking through the who knows where. The set of booze wafts off him. 
I think he's got family connections, people in high places, and he's been using them to his advantage. He backs off, walking carelessly on his chair. Don't know, just a thought. Might be onto something. Henry grunts and stares into his glass. No, no, just wishful thinking. Well, I'm going to find out. We can do that in a bit. Let's talk to the security guard. The security guard steps forward and raises his hand. Sorry, ma'am, area's off limits. What's that? It's the woozing employee patio reserved for woozing customers and their guests. General public's not admitted. Why don't you head back to your table? There's ample seating in the main dining room. What if I ask nicely? Do you let me through then? The corner of the guard's mouth cracks into a weak smile. Sorry, but not even the mighty please and thank you will help you here. No problem. Okay, let's... Talk to David. David's all smiles. He's just finished a joke to the uproarious laughter of his party. Hello, friend. Try to get in on this joviality. You're welcome to join us for the next round. His words bleed into each other. This isn't his first drink. What are we celebrating? My recent successes. Uh, through some hard work and a little businessly persuasion. He winks at you knowingly. I sealed two contracts, and the third's on the way. Hey, congratulations. Next round's on me. David beams. He's a real friend. Come, let's drink. He slams back a shot and hoots with satisfaction. Much appreciated. Thank you, my good woman. So, one friend for another. How'd you bag all those contracts in one day? A fresh f flush fills David's cheeks. He wobbles on the spot and grins at you. Well, it wasn't too hard, truth be told. Someone did almost the work. Did most of the work for me. See that poor sot down there? He gestures to Henry. We just upgraded our security at work. A few nights ago, I, the fool left behind a note containing his new password. I wrote it down and had some fun. Sent nasty messages to his clients. Removed a couple of appointments from his schedule. David tosses his hands into the air, spilling his drink. And boom, I'm employee of the month. All I had to do was some damage control. They're that man's clients. They're mine now. Nicely done. Very clever, my friend. His cocky smile stretches across his all too proud face. I thought so too. Thanks again for the drink, friend. You have yourself a good night. Hey, Ren, these guys run on the edge. Both blasted one, pissed off the other. Well, an asshole. One word and these guys will be throwing down. That happens loud enough. Security bound to respond. Just a thought. Indeed, it is just a thought. Right, let's talk to chef. the chef. Hmm. Chef peers at you over a mountain of oysters. No guests in the kitchen. Out. The service here is absolutely barbaric. I demand to speak to the head chef. He grabs a towel from a nearby rack and wipes his hands, grumbling to himself. I'm the head chef. I have little time to cook my food, even less for conversation. Don't give me answers. Don't give me that. I'm a guest here and I deserve answers to my question. Just make it quick. You've got 60 seconds before I have to pull these prawns out of the boiler. I'm told one of tonight's guests has a shellfish allergy. Less than mild mannered orc. Sound familiar? That's a polite way to put it. Gave two of my cooks broken ribs and a matching set of black eyes last time he stormed my kitchen. He waves his hand. Yes, I know that orc. He's got a shellfish allergy and he's overly keen on handing us about. As though he wasn't the top seafood restaurant in the Sixth World. Mistakes happen. Sometimes you reach for a mushroom and accidentally grab an oyster. Maybe such an accident happens to our old friend. Know what I'm saying? What? He balks at your suggestion. After a moment's recovery, he looks straight at you. Nostrils fled. You can't possibly be saying what I think you are. You want me to poison a diner? You're deranged. I'm calling security. Haven't you noticed the black of guards tonight? No doubt Wu Zhang's aware here. It's as if they want a certain summon out of the way. Are you going to disappoint them? Oh ho ho! The chef nervously wrings his towel between his hands, stares at the sumptuous plates of food waiting to be eaten, a glance over his shoulder, a shake of the head, and he smiles, a small wry thing. You know, he never appreciated our cuisine, our art. I think a special order, thanks is in order. See yourself out, won't you? Excellent. So that would... Okay. So, let's... We don't need that, but we can talk to him now. Henry gazes into the tall drink in front of him. You came back. Listen, that David Prick you mentioned? Turns out he broke into your work terminal and sent your clients some nasty messages from your name. Then he swooped in and stole them. A spark of severity washes over Henry. The dullness in his eyes drains away and he sits up alarmed. That, that explains why no one would return my messages. With a grunt, he smashes his fist into the counter. He turns towards David and mutters, though. 
through to clenched teeth. You must pick Daddy, I can handle it, I can handle him. He jumps up and marches towards David. Henry and David stand inches from one another, both men wearing the fiercest expressions they can muster. Their hatred is almost palpable. How their confrontation will play out is unclear, but one thing is certain. You have a great seat. Henry stabs a finger into David's chest and speaks a low hiss. You stole my business and I know it. You might have picked this fight, but I'm going to win it. Fair and fucking square. Show you how those with integrity operate, you cheat. David's mouth eases into a contented smirk. You want to lose face twice in one day? I'm happy to oblige, but not in here. I'll be damned if the Shangri-La bans me for thrashing a worthless crap stain like you on their property. Let's finish this outside, now. Fine, but I don't think that this will give you any sort of advantage. It only means I won't have to hold back. Let's go. Okay, so that just probably means, yeah, yeah, I know. That just probably means that we'll have less to deal with when we comes to wait for target. Now bar stall offers a little in the way of comfort. A quick look around reveals the disparity between the restaurant proper and the bar, the latter of which appears neglected in comparison to the pristine dining room. Old dried drink rings dapple the counter's uneven surface, and angry scratches run down its length. But you've got time to kill before the rooster arrives. Now this is as good a spot as any to wait. Let's just grab a drink. Let's take away as you mull over a cold one. The rooster should be here any time now. An alarmed waiter in a tussle uniform stumbles into the kitchen. Chef, we have a problem, a big problem. Got the drama, cook mage, cork mage, we're working here. We got right out. A fight out front in a sick diner and you are still in here gazing dumplings. Our second floor guest is pissed. His head of security spewing up prawns and looking for someone to blame. You better brace yourselves for a mouthful of fists. Whoa, that's pretty big. A howl and several thumps catch the cooking staff's attention. Apprehensive glances are tossed around the kitchen. Their fear abruptly confirmed as a huge orc bursts into the room. The Jagger's scar on the orc's cheek matches your client's description of the talon. What would if the talon's face weren't a lumpy, swollen, seeping mess? Or, joining the talent, the talent's face flushes in anger, or perhaps as a side effect of his allergy. He raises a knobbly finger to the room. What wrong with this place? His swollen, swollen lips spit more saliva than sounds. Excuse me, sir, you're holding the kitchen up. If you have any questions or concerns, speak to our host up front. He rounds on the chef, rolled his raised in disbelief. I've got a concern, all right, a concern regarding this shit house you call a restaurant. His voice booms. This is the third time you slobheads have fucked up my order. I'm regularly forced to choke down your garbage. I expect not the least some substitutions to be followed. No, shellfish. Get it right the next time someone's going to end up a whole lot worse than named. Duncan turns to your eyebrows raised. You call me shot fused. Maybe now you'll think twice before ragging on me when things heat up. Oh no, I'll never stop ragging on you, Duncan. Hey, if the town's down here, that means he's left the upstairs room unguarded. You're right, let's go while he's still distracted. And let's roll. Come on. Looks like this is the room. Everything else is locked. Inside the private dining room, you're immediately greeted by the piercing stare of two massive dragon statues. Flickering lights just bright enough to illuminate their bronze bodies. The effect an eerie illusion of slithering scales. Across the room stands your target, Chung Sing Rooster Low. Hands trembling at his sides. A single anxious guard stands near the door. Something has the mileage. The talon is missing. Chung Sing Rooster Low. Sweat drips down Rooster's gaunt face. His eyes dart back and forth across the room, trying to size you up, assess the situation. Without support, he appears nothing more than a trapped rooster who, without his talons, defenceless. In an effort to invoke a sense of authority, he raises his voice. Who, who are you? What do you want? I come to deliver you to my client, Mr. Lowe. Don't worry, they specified you are not to be harmed. Zoo, where's the talon? Where's the rest of my security? A second passes whilst his eyes scour the room, looking for someone, anyone, to come to his aid. Never mind, you just get the street tramp out of here. Yes, sir. Oh, 
and no talent, no backup, all alone. You must really like your boss. He glances at Rooster. Uh, no, not exactly. No. He begins to slowly back towards the door. In fact, you can have him. Good boy. No, wait, spare my life, I beg you, please. Drops a spit splatter from his mouth. His desperation is obvious. Stop that, I'm here to take you alive. Don't make me change my mind. Mm. Listen, Seattle, we may have Rooster, but these stiffs are probably just a handful of his guards. You could have him went downstairs. We can't leave the same way we came in. We've got to get out of here in one piece. We need to find a new exit route fast. And I'm betting this chicken guy knows one. So how about it? Where's the door you used to discreetly make your way in here? Rooster's teeth are chattering inside his head. His frame shakes uncontrollably. The realization that he's at your mercy, but no one left to defend him is setting in. Well, Mr. Lowe, mind pointing us to the exit? Rooster stammers incoherently for a moment, but his words soon catch up with him. Uh, it's just outside this room to the right, but, but it's locked. And you have the key, don't you? He blinks, confused, his shock mind slowly processing your implication. Yes, I, yes, I do. He reaches into his coat and withdraws the small key. I'll take that. That's just quickly. A monolithic extravagant aquarium dominates the restaurant's lounge. We can see an enemy's open and close along the rock, hanged rocky bottom. I'm failing to reveal it. it's like a natural fireworks display. In the upper reach is the tank, multicolored fish. Of all shapes and sizes, let's grab some. Don't worry, I've got it. Your call. Okay. Well, that's wrong. Let's just, we grabbed a fish. And let's go to the service elevator. Boom. The calling clicks, a burst of static, and then the sound clears to reveal a soft voice. Rain, is this your channel? Who's asking? My name's Pilon, I'm your getaway driver. We have details to discuss, but let's keep it brief. Time's ticking. Another burst of static and Pilon continues. I'm at the loading dock across the bridge from the restaurant's main entrance. Big old schooner. Can't miss me. But neither will the HKPF, who've just learned have just learned her on their way in here in response to a security call. This ought to be fun. One last thing. I may be the driver, but this ain't my rig. Doors locked and I don't know the code. You may have to break in. Good luck and get moving. Okay. Pair of tried gangsters block your path. Chung Meng, Chung Sing, Rooster Low. The men, help me! The words start pouring out of Rooster's mouth so quickly that they blow together. You free me, get away from me. Get me away from here and I guarantee you'll be rewarded. New Yen, favors, power, whatever you want. Two guards exchange a look and then turn back to Rooster smiling. Actually, we are liking the position you're at, we're in now. You begging at our feet. The idea that maybe once you're gone we can move up the chain. You know, Rocco, he is plenty qualified to take your seat. In fact, we might as well make sure you don't make it out of here alive. Rooster looks up at them at eye rate. His fairy fury fizzles upon spotting the thugs' various and ample gutlery. No, no, I, I can make you rich. Eh? Easy there. Let's make not not make this a scene. We go our way. You go yours. Gangs looks over you. No ink, no suits. You one of them runners? Shit, a runner. Don't like a take off with Rooster. He reaches for a weapon. Get him. Oh dear. Okay, damage 18, one bullet, single target. Ooh, accuracy 20%. Really? Nine damage. Ugh. Let's try this one. And big dunk. Uh, 
Let's. Mm. This is it for two armor. No, I need to. to hit Gobby. Hmm. He can go back here. And and turn. Really? Great. Thanks. Okay, let's Kill that one. Let's flank him. Really? Really, he missed a flank shot. And you missed that one. last time. Okay. So let's roll we what's our mission? Access the docking bay. Isabel hacked the keypad. Isabel cautiously steps forward, her eyes fixed on the keypad. Watch my back. She janks in. Okay, what have we got here? The Talon. Talon bursts out of Shangri-La, nearly tearing the door from their hinges. Despite the fleshy lumps that have transformed his face into an unreasonable swollen mess, his rage is clear. At the side of the talon, you see Rooster's body relax. His voice cracks. Talon, I'm over here. I've got weapons trained on me. Can't move. Save me and we'll get out of here. Take this incident straight to the top. They'll herald us and Bible reward us. Through licking eyes, the talon homes in on the rooster. You little shit. Dragging me to this restaurant over and over. Making me eat filth or watch you and stuff your goddamn face full of it. Now here you are, turned traitor in a blink. The rooster's trembling with fear, or anger, or both. He raises a shaky finger and points it at the talon. You can't speak to me that way. You're beneath me. I'm still a red pole, and when the triad comes for me, I'll see you flayed for those words. Ha! Love punches the air. Talon's lips curve into a clumsy smile, his eyes gleaming. You won't get shit for the 289s, in fact. If any allies don't get you, I'll try it, Will. Make sure you don't go squawking to anybody about high level plans or secret whatever. Flee like you won't last the night. Rooster's fake bravado melts away. Eyes wide, he looks desperately around him. Trapped like a mouse. A snake's coil. Enemies on each side. His voice is small, pleading. Talon, Johnny, please, help me. It wasn't a bell bad right? We had some good runs, you remember? Panic shakes him. I had no choice, Johnny. I was forced to surrender, but if you help me, I'll get me out of here. I'll see you rewarded, even promoted. How would you like that? Without hesitation, the talent takes a step forward and spits on the ground. To hell with you, spineless bit pusher. I'll bet you didn't even put up a fight. Just roll over and play the captive coward. I'm going to enjoy plenty of blood in your soft, worthless skull. Here it is his weapon. Ooh, that's going to be painful. Sniper rifles, this is not good. This is not good at all. This is really bad. Oh boy. Really? Okay, dunks. Oh, you're 
kidding. That's another eight damage. Um, yeah, that's some of spirit. I have to plug in my computer now because I forgot to put the power in. So one second for that. Otherwise we will have a very short episode. There we are. Let's see. Let's move to there. And let's try and target him. A miss, of course. Oh, good. Gobbit. Go here. And Mr. Wu can come back here and then turn. Oh, great. Good, good, good. Yeah, we're in trouble on this one. We might have to restart this mission. Okay. Did critical hit him? Um, armor damaged. No miss. Let's move to there. Oh, my God. Chalung. Let's end the turn. Jesus. Are we going to get any body? Oh, come on. Is anybody going to be... Okay, well, let's switch to this. Forty damage. Let's take all of those. Um Let's take aim at you. Oh, come on. She's healed. Um, and you can heal Duncan. And head back here. God, that's going to be painful. Duncan might go down here. Okay. Let's take down the Talon. Duncan. Heal 
himself 25 hit points. Good. Gobby. Go down there. Try and hit that one. And then end. So that's missed. No, oh my god. Another grenade. And another mess. So I'm pretty badly hurt. That one's killed. That one. She can heal him for twenty five. Oh shit, that's actually open. Balls. Um, that's a pretty hardcore thing. Out of ammo. Reload. And... Oh, she didn't manage to do it. He's escaped. Oh, Duncan could die here. That's all right. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, right, so we're, we're good now. Down. Down. Take that one down. That was actually really fucking good. That one down. And then move into cover. Kobe. Heal yourself. Oh shit. And move around to there. Okay, let's let's switch over to that. Out of ammo, reload. Still, that's a fucking amazing thing. Heal yourself, and then, yep, then move over to me. No, I've got it. Aim accuracy plus twelve percent, and can't hurt to, to do a quick firing session there. Ooh, subdue. Interesting. Missed that. I think you can go in there. Ouch, 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 ouch. Let's go to her. She can come here. Really? I can't see that? Oh, Jesus, wept. Let's run in here. Duncan can move to here. Overwatch there. And gob it. No. 
Okay, well, let's just reload. It's 15 hit points healed there. Screw it, let's go. Just run. Screw it. The boat sways languidly at the top of the water. Insulated walls stifle outside noises as if the chaos just beyond the door belonged to another world. Its interior is cramped, made smaller by maritime equipment protruding from the walls. The sound of sea and mouldering wood dominates your senses, ripened from years of perfunctory cleaning. Finally, a safe place to rest. Mr. flinches at your approach. When he speaks, he tries to sound comfortable. But his voice cracks. 289s are going to jam you up for this. I doubt it. You're out of the way. Someone's probably nabbed your job by now. You grab the woman if you know what's good for you. You'll clap your trap. Chicken man. She drunk, grunts in frustration. Can the schooner go any slower? I want to get paid already. There's a cinnamon bun stall in Kaitak with my name on it. I hang in there. The boat heaves and pitches over the bay as your driver ploughs through the choppy waves to the drop-off point, leaving the Shangri-La restaurant far behind. Inside, restlessness fills the cabin. You finish the job. The extraction was a success, and now your client awaits his prize, the triad red pole rooster. It wasn't easy. It should have been. It would have been. If that damn talon hadn't mangled your plan to the visible determination. But even a street's forged dog like the talon could be stricken down. With the talon dead, you escape from the restaurant to the getaway boat was made smoother. Well, as smooth as wading through a small army of triads, scouting the HKPF dragon it could be. Luckily, we still got through the pursuit unharmed, and with the talent now permanently out of commission, you might earn a few extra new yen from your client. All in, a good run. And I think as soon as we get back, we will call it a day. Let's see if we can get back. It's running a bit slow. There we go. Okay. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please subscribe. If not, do not worry about it. And we shall do some more of this next time. Thank you ever so much for watching. Goodbye.